What's up everybody? Today I'm doing a video on mounting the pole mount for uh, those awesome 360 shots where it looks like the camera is just kind of floating uh, outside the airplane, almost like there's a drone just kind of out in the leading edge of the wing flying out in front. I've got all the items here that I'm going to need. I've got the two rock steady surface base clamps with the hardware that comes with it. I've got the 48 inch pole uh, that I ordered that can be cut down shorter as required. You can also just adjust it within the clamp to be shorter. Extra screws here, just in case uh, the screws that come with it are not the correct size. Screwdriver uh, that's just got different bits that I can use. Ryan at Flight Flix was really smart when he designed this system. There's a little locking screw on the bracket itself, and when you look at it, it looks just like it's a 10 millimeter. And like most of you know, 10 millimeters are the most commonly lost socket or wrench out there. That's the one that always disappears. You never know why your 10 millimeter is gone. Uh, so I walked over to my toolbox just to make sure I knew where my 10 millimeter was. Uh, I found it, and it ended up being too small. So uh, they were really thinking in that they made the set nut an 11 millimeter, which I can't remember the last time I used this 11 millimeter wrench. So the concern with mounting this on an RV uh, is as you look, the bottom of the wing isn't exactly perfectly flat. Uh, and this pole does not have much give to it. So if, if it does not have from the front bracket to the rear bracket, a very nice straight uh, run there, the brackets don't sit exactly aligned. So I had a little bit of trouble trying to decide where exactly I was gonna mount these so that the brackets had enough space in between both of them to provide a lot of rigidity, as well as this front bracket not being too far forward to angle it up so that that pole wanted to bend kind of in the middle. Uh, so I found a couple areas that I was going to try. Uh, the issue being is that if the brackets are too far back, the pole may not be long enough to uh, reach out in front of the wing far enough to be able to give that really awesome 360 spherical view that everyone's looking for in these shots. So uh, we're going to try a couple different areas. Uh, I tried these two front screws here uh, that you mount, uh, tried mounting the front bracket uh, there. You'll see what I mean here in a moment, but that the the pole, when I would install the pole, the clamp was not seating uh, quite right because it wanted to uh, kind of bend the pole a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try moving uh, from these front two uh, and just work my way back uh, a set of screws at a time until it kind of sits flush within that clamp. What I found was for the back bracket, the first and third screw aft of the seam on the aluminum here works really well uh, for a nice mounting position there. As I move back on the forward bracket though, I may have to start moving back here if I feel like those brackets are getting too close together. We'll see what happens. So if you watched my video, uh, the unboxing video, if you will, on this equipment, uh, you'll see that it came with a base bracket as well as a gasket to keep from uh, marring the under uh, anything in between so you don't have metal on metal. It came with the bracket. Uh, it did not come with the Allen wrench required to tighten here. Uh, so uh, I'll figure out for y'all what size that is here. And then it came with uh, the bag of screws as well as some washers. What you'll see here is that the screws that go underneath my uh, wingtip are not uh, as large as the washer, uh, as the screws that come with it. I believe this is a uh, number eight and a number 10, whereas the screws for my wingtip are a number six. Uh, so if you look closely, the washers that they send uh, are set up to where they sit, uh, the screw will sit a little flush uh, inside there. Uh, but what I plan on doing, since I have a slightly smaller screw here, is uh, changing these these screws to a pan head screw and just using a flat washer on there. Uh, this is cool because you think like, oh yeah, super aerodynamic and slick, nothing sits over the top, but I've already got this mount out there in the Airstream. So I don't think a little uh, number six pan head screw uh, is going to provide any more drag uh, 
that's really going to be noticeable when I'm really just worried about the camera shot out there. So as you can see underneath here, I was able uh, to get a semi uh, pretty in line uh, attachment here by using the third and fifth screw back from the leading edge, as well as the first screw and the third screw after the seam uh, on the wing. You can see what I'm talking about here with this screw. So you can see now I swapped out the original hardware with some pan head screws that fit the thread pattern of my wingtips, which were a six by 32 with some flat washers. Feel like the look is a lot cleaner. The original equipment just wasn't giving me the look that I wanted. So I was able to update it to something a lot cleaner looking. So that's the install of the Flight Flix 360 pole mount camera system. I have done a couple flights with it and have noticed a few things I'm going to be changing. So far you can see the videos on my YouTube. The first one is the 360 river run and the issue that I've found is that potentially since this uh, pole is aluminum and still in that kind of bare aluminum color and my aircraft is in that aluminum color that the camera has a hard time deleting the pole out of the video. So there's a little bit of an effect there. I'm gonna try spray painting the pole black and see if that helps. I'm also gonna try in a later video, mounting it to the top of the wingtip to see if that extra you know, foot or so above gives a little bit of a different focal plane. So look for those videos to come, testing out several different locations for this left and right wingtip, as well as some tips on if you're gonna be using a system like this, some things you have to keep in mind airborne. Uh, in my test flights, I have noticed that there was a couple things that I thought were gonna be really awesome shots, and when I came back to edit the videos later, it wasn't giving me quite the view or vantage point that I was looking for. So there's gonna be some definite learning curve that goes along with this system. So stick with me, keep up with all my videos, and we'll be talking through all those different tips and tricks with this system right here. So far I'm extremely happy with what I'm getting. Now it's just really learning the system to how to make sure I get the most out of it and get the exact clips and shots that I'm looking for. Thanks for watching another video from Plain Awesome Dad. If you like the video please click like. If you haven't already click subscribe so that you can keep up to date with all my most recent videos. I'll be trying to put out content as much as possible. It won't always be airplane related although that will probably be the majority of it got a couple different projects that I've been working on around the house that those videos should be coming out pretty soon, as well as uh, different things that dads just seem to like to do. If there's anything you'd like to see, please comment below, or if you have any tips or tricks that you've learned with using one of these 360 pull mount cameras, uh, leave them in the comments and I'll try them out and get videos up uh, on YouTube so that people can learn from everyone else's tips and tricks as well. All right, everyone, thanks again for watching. We'll see you again soon.